One of my viewers tried to fix his son's Xbox Series S. It didn't go so well, and he broke it even worse. So I paid him $80 for it. Let's see if we can fix it. The seller said that he tried to replace the HDMI port, but in the process of removing the HDMI port, he tore off some traces from the motherboard. That's a pretty difficult repair. So let's see how it looks when we get to the motherboard. Now, so far, everything is actually looking pretty good in this thing. I don't see, you know, a bunch of broken stuff or anything, which is always nice. Um, so far, the seller that I bought this from did a pretty decent job of taking it apart and reassembling it. But the part we got to worry about is right down here. Got to get this thing out the rest of the way. All right, and with that clamp off, we can see if they use the perfect amount of thermal paste. Um, well, I mean, it's from the factory, so it's definitely not the perfect amount. We'll fix that up in a minute. Let's get a close look at this HDMI port. And here we go. This is going to be a big job. Two, four, six, eight, nine traces that I can see right now without even taking the port off. And I feel like there's probably some more broken traces or torn off traces underneath here. So. I mean, the first thing we need to do is just remove this port so we can get a good view of what's going on under there. So next I'm just going to use my hot air soldering station to bring some hot air over the mounting pins on this HDMI port. I'll be heating it from the bottom side and I'll be heating it until it gets enough heat that it also melts the top side. All of those 19 small pins, even though they're probably not soldered on, I do want to get the solder melted and so it will freely release from any pads that still are there. And this is what we have to work with. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, back when I ran my repair business, I think I charged like $10 extra for each of these I had to fix. So that would have been an extra $90 on top of the repair cost for this thing. But let's see. Um, it also looks like we're missing some components over here. We got one, two, three, four. So we're going to need to replace those. These ones, the broken trace goes all the way up to them, but it looks like it ends underneath them or something. So, oh yeah, we got some loose, loose traces there too. So we'll need to fix that. Another missing component here. So we'll need to replace those. But I think what we need to do, firstly, I'm going to clean this up and we need to see if we can move this guy over here and then I'm going to place the new port on top of all of these and then we'll run the trace to the pin on the port. So let's see if we can get this clean without damaging any other traces. So this guy though, we need to see if we can lift it and move it without breaking it. I don't know that we'll be able to do that. It's moving a little bit at least. There we go. Okay, that actually looks good just like that. So now what I think I'll do is I'm going to come in with my soldering iron and add some fresh solder to all of these. And then we'll put the new port on, make sure all of these pins are soldered on solidly, and then we'll get the traces repaired. So first we're going to flux it up, and I'm adding it just a little bit at a time with my metal dental pick, just because you don't necessarily need a ton on, all, on it all. There we go. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of solder to my soldering iron. And I'm gonna come over and just run it over these pins right here. And this one, this one, this one, and this one. There we go. And this is the new HDMI port, and I'm actually gonna do the same thing here. I'm going to add some flux to the pins and then add some fresh solder to all of the pins. That will also make it so the solder on the pins is gonna to want to stick to the solder on the board. And now I'm just gonna bring my large soldering iron in. Just go over each of the pins. Doesn't matter for bridging joints here. We'll clean that up. These two pins really wanna stay bridged. So we'll add some more flux. And there we go. Hey, 
And let's see how we well we did soldering this on. These pins are perfect. And then this pin is soldered on. This one, the pad is loose, so that's normal. The, the pin is soldered to the pad. That's the main thing we need. Same here, same here. This one's a little bit off, and this one's a tiny bit off, but that's not any issue at all. All of these are soldered on perfectly. So now we need to get to the hard part of this job. I'm gonna be using some enameled wire and I'm gonna solder the enameled wire onto the pin and then we'll run it down the trace all the way down to where it connects and then we'll solder it to the connection point. So I've already got some flux where it needs to be on these pins. Now I need to come in with my enameled wire and I'm gonna get a little bit of flux on it and then first thing we need to do is melt off the coating. That's what I'm doing with my iron right now. It won't stick to the pins if we have that coating on there. Okay, and it looks like the first pin is right there. So I'm going to use a pair of tweezers to guide my wire right where it needs to go and get it melted onto that pin. Okay. So then we need to go about right here and bend it. And then over here. Right about there. And then it will connect right there. So I'm gonna cut this one. I'm gonna give myself plenty of room. Cut that one right there. And move on to the next one. All right, and here we are so far. We've got all nine of those wires soldered on. Let's check, we might need to re-solder some of those, but I think before we do that, let's get these things all mounted in. I'm actually gonna um, put some conformal coating on them, maybe even some super glue to help glue them down. And then we'll go through and redo any of those joints that we need to. And then we've got to join them together with the circuits. And then we also have to make sure these little diodes are installed on here correctly. So the super glue is now dried. So these are mounted on here permanently. They're not gonna go anywhere. I will come through and add some more conformal coating later, but now it is time to solder on the other ends. So this one needs to be soldered here. This one here, this one here, these two over here. This one could be, these two actually could be a challenge because we need to try and solder them on right down here. I think there's enough of a piece of the old um, circuit trace there to solder onto. And then we need to solder these two on right here. So I'm gonna move these all out of the way just a little bit so then we can uh, grind off a little bit of the coating. These, uh, all these traces have a little bit of a coating on them. This trace is loose, so I'm actually gonna cut it right here. There we go. And then we'll grind this part off right here. So I'm gonna grind off some uh, little section of each of these traces, and then we can solder each of the wires to the corresponding trace. And now that that's done, I'm going to flux up those parts that I just ground off. Then I will use a soldering iron to add some solder to those traces. And then we'll solder the wires on.
Okay, so these are looking pretty good. We got them all soldered on nice and solid. Now the next thing we have to worry about is these diodes. Each set of these um, jumpers need to have diodes on them. So here's actually one. This pad looks like it's kind of not torn off, but not in the best condition. Hopefully that one will still work. I think it will. So we need one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. So what I'm gonna do is use my grinding pen, grind off some traces or, or grind off this coating, and then I'm going to apply conformal coating over these wires, and then we should be able to use hot air to come in and install these diodes. We're gonna make it as thin as we can. And that's good enough for now. I'm gonna cure that with the UV light. And then after that's done, I might do another layer or two. Okay, and we have all of the conformal coating applied and hardened. Now we just need to install these little diodes on each of these uh, traces right here. Now, one of the problems that potentially could happen is when I heat this with hot air, it's not gonna focus just right here. It's gonna heat this whole area. So what I'm trying to avoid is it heating up these edges or these legs over here that are attached to the legs on the HDMI port itself. If that happens, it'll come loose and then we'll have to redo it. So I'm trying to avoid that. I also wanna make sure each of these wires stays attached to the board. If it gets too hot, it can melt the solder and loosen from the board, but the conformal coating hopefully will keep that from happening. I also have some Kapton tape here and these two blurry blobs over here are two quarters. Those are just there to help soak up the heat. So here we go, let's see if we can do this. And that definitely is not a pretty repair. These diodes actually are all angled funny like this, even on the factory board. So, I mean, that's kind of normal looking. These ones are a little more extreme, but even though this doesn't look great, this is a nice solid repair that's gonna last a long time. Let's get this board put back in the console and then see if this thing will start up and work. But first we need to be sure to apply the perfect amount of thermal paste. There we go. So it's all back together. Let's plug it in and see if $80 and several hours worth of work was worth it, or if I kind of ripped myself off. Let's see if it'll power on. Good. No fan yet. Okay, there's the fan. Let's see if we get a signal. There we go, of course we get a signal. I can't believe you doubted me. That was a lot of work, but I'm so glad we we're able to bring this thing back to life. If you like this type of video and you wanna see a video where I tried to fix the Halo Infinite Special Edition Xbox Series X, I'll put a link for that video up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I could fix it. Thanks so much for watching today and I hope you have a good one.